Okay, on to the big one, the long one, the neutrals. Most of these suck because neutrals aren't meant to be strong. If neutrals were strong, no one, it wouldn't matter what class you play other than hero powers. So, Desk Imp, one. Let's go through these relatively quickly because it's a zero amount of one, one. Like, sure, you. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. There is the. Actually, I'm trolling. Um, four mana, priest. This guy. Yeah. You play this. <laughs> you play the one. You play this and you play wisps. And then on turn four, you fart your whole hand and you have like 16, 16 and a bunch of three, six. That never happens. It's one. You just play wisp. Wisp is superior. Doesn't that sack pack pre nerf? Kappa. When Skull Mats out on the 6th of August in two days. Two days time. Wait. Yeah, two days. It's a one. It's a four. That's a th three. It has potential, but I don't think it gets played in Myth Decks. Also nerfs Gala Warlock. This is true. Also nerfs Demonic Studies. No, Demonic Studies. Pepe Hands. Uh, This card might see play. I don't think it's... It has potential. It could see play. I don't think it like defines any deck, and I don't think it goes in every deck. Maybe Big Warrior? Just No, that, that ruins Big Warrior. <laughs> Maybe in Big Warrior you run a 1-1, one, one, and that makes Dimensional Ripper great. I was just trying to think how to play big stuff without falling behind. But, yeah, it, it's, it seems like in, in certain scenarios it could be good. Just not right now. Uh, inter Intrepid Initiate. Initiate. I've seen people rate this five stars. I've seen people say this is the new Blazing Battle Mage. I'm going to say it's not. Broom might be a better carpet in Zoo. This is true. Maybe it goes in Zoo. Uh, I'm going to give it three. I think it's significantly worse than Blazing Battle Mage. I think you don't cut you don't cut this for you don't cut blazing battle mage for this, um because you're forced to play a spell. And it's kind of like the battle fiend effect. When you're playing demon hunter, you always play battle mage first and battle fiend second, um because now you're forced to play a spell. On coin it's good, but I would rather have a doesn't it scale? You can only spell burst once, so it just stays as a three two. Um I think in like a card that's only good fifty percent. Say you get the coin fifty percent of the time. Like there's technical math. Sometimes you don't. Intrepid Kind Sidekick? That's like a dream hand, right? And what class are we talking, by the way? What class are we are we playing Intrepid Kind Sidekick in? Because in Demon Hunter, it's not better than Battle Fiend. So it never goes in Demon Hunter. So Demon Hunter is the main class you'd want this. And I don't think it's better than Battle Mage or Battle Fiend. So I wouldn't run this in Demon Hunter. Because Demon Hunter, you also... I guess you, you then you're forced to like waste a Twin Slice. It can't be a 5-2. Uh, Spellburst only goes off once. It's kind of like Small Time Buccaneer. But uh, equipping a weapon is, is easier, I think, than casting a spell. Especially in the, the classes you want to do this in. In Aggro Rogue, you're forced to like waste maybe a backstab or a coin. Um, No, I actually don't think this is that good. Wasting your spells just to give something plus two attack seems... Like, there's going to be a lot of times people are going to get baited into like throwing their removal and their, their spells just to give plus two attack. Uh, I feel like it's going to happen a lot. Obviously, on coin, it's very, very good. Um, hopefully they change the coin to not count as a spell. This plus coin spell. Yes, there's going to be situations in which this is broken. The reason I'm saying this is not good. Um, the reason I'm saying this is not good is not because, um, like, it's bad. It's because it's not consistent. Battle Mage is always a 2-2. Off coin, on coin, going first, going second. You play it, it is a 1-mana two, 2-2. This, sometimes good with a 1-3. One two. Sometimes good with a three three two. Like sometimes good. I don't know. Seems it's playable in Druid or Shaman. Druid doesn't really want to like I think Druid Geberling is just way better, but maybe you run both. But like I feel like you you want like more kind of synergistic cards in Druid. This doesn't really synergize with anything else. It just kinda gains its attack, maybe hits face twice and then dies. I feel like synergy in Druid is super important. Same with Shaman. Uh, I think a 1-mana 2-2 is just way more consistent. And consistency is way more valuable over a, higher, a larger sample size in Hearthstone. This card I might be wrong on, though. Um, this card I can definitely be wrong on, and I'm, I'm fine to be wrong on that. Pen Flinger. Do 1 damage to Bellworth. Turn this to your hand. There's going to be some kind of Clark OTK with this. Um, the deck, the card itself is better than Elven Archer. Although it's it's a 1. It's a in real decks, it's never going to see play. 
in which case you don't play it because oh, that's Sam rating. I'm giving this an honest review on the fact that sure it's gonna be good in some kind of weird mage, but like pen flinger throwing pens isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it in a tier one, tier two, or tier three deck in my opinion. Uh, you can open your packs for Skullman's Academy when it comes out on the sixth of August. Five star tour guide, one of the best cards of the set. This card is insane. Maybe slightly overrated. Maybe it's four, but I think this card is really really good. Uh, you hear Particle Zero is just so good in almost any kind of aggressive deck. You just get free stuff. It gives you two mana. Better than Elven Arch is a pretty low bar. This is true. This card, though, mm, you play us on one. You play Phase Stalker on two. Hit the Hero Power on two. Easy secret. Free mana. Free secret. Tutored. You can play it with Dragon's Bane and Hunter. This goes straight into Hunter. So good. It goes straight into Hunter. You can Dragon's Bane on four. You can Phase Stalker on two. Just face hunter, you can like, you can go side quest, coin, tour guide, hero power, and then hero power again on two, and then hero power on three, and complete side quest on three. You can complete face hunter, it goes into every aggressive deck. Totem shaman, you can now totem on one, that's huge, because you can totem on one and then coin the reflection on two. Zulok, tapping on one's not bad, like tapping's not bad. Um, quest lock, you play this on one, you, then you have to play this instead of quest on one though. Oh no, 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 wait. Yeah, I don't think it goes into quest lock. How do you how do you make it work in quest lock? So one mana one one really worth wanting. It's just free two mana. It's a one mana one one gain two mana. Except demon hunter, kind of bad in demon hunter. Yeah, I don't want to play in quest lock, but any kind of aggressive deck insta goes in for sure. I think this card is the one where it's like, oh, tour guide's good. You can synergize it with this guy, but this guy's a one. <laughs> yeah, I just think four mana. Uh, it, I mean, maybe quest lock. I'll give it a two for the quest lock value. Maybe, because like turn four, you can tap and then play the really bad questing explorer. Okay, maybe it goes in... Quest lock is still tight. The list is still tight right now. I can't see a two mana, two, three fitting in. Uh, worst river croc brings you closer to fatigue. Thank you, chat. Um, <laughs> uh, playable in midrange hunter? I don't think so. Demon Hunter? Oh, maybe Demon Hunter. Maybe we, we, have a, we have a case for Demon Hunter here. We have a case in Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter, we have a case of, of is it better than Spectral Sight? We have, a, we have a, like a, a hard case of is it better than Spectral Sight? Like, sure, it would work in Demon Hunter. Is it better? I mean, it would no. I don't think it's better than Spectral Sight. Um, It's a 2-3 two two, three on 3. I don't think it's better than Volpura Scoundrel. Even though Volpura gets a bit weaker with the new expansion. Demon Hunter doesn't even lack draw. This is true. Demon Hunter doesn't need the card draw. Let's move on. This, this, what even is this? It's like a fish, fish, fish tiger. I don't know. Let's move on from the fish tiger and let's go next. Yeah, Demon Hunter has way too much draw. Doesn't need it. Um. Stealth. That what? Three one ghost with stealth hand. How do ghosts work? Let me let me call up Sneaky Delinquent on the website and see if it tells me. Sneaky. I don't want to form out of pieces. Does it tell me what the ghost does? It doesn't. Oh, no, it does. It's a 2 mana 3 1 stealth. Oh, the ghosts have stealth? Is this this how it works? The ghosts have stealth? Um, yo, what's up, Fiskar? And thanks for the follow, Ekim. Um, oh, this has stealth as well. So the ghost is just an exact copy, right? That's how ghost works? Hmm. So the ghost just an exact copy at the same cost. So is it better than Scavateer? Maybe? It's kind of like a spy mistress. Oh, a ghost with stealth to your hand? I'm an idiot. Okay, I went all the way to the website just because just I couldn't be bothered reading properly. I'm good at reading. Uh, I don't think it's better than Scavateer. Yeah, maybe it's better than Scavateer. Hmm... Could replace Bonecher, Brawl, and Hound Hunter? If Guardian Og Merchant didn't exist, yes, but I think Guardian Og Merchant makes this. Um, two? I'm gonna go with two. I think it maybe goes into some kind of stealth rogue. Maybe doesn't. But I don't see it being played in anything else. So it's maybe playable. If we scroll right up to the rating thing, this card is is maybe playable. I, I'll have to evaluate whether it's actually playable. 
but I don't want to overrate every neutral. This card's a one, and he looks. They are really creepy. Can we just like do 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 do? I don't trust this guy. Don't leave your kids alone if this guy's near. Um, jeez. I'm gonna go with many spellkin is getting a getting a two. Um, not even a two. It's probably a one, right? Out of one cut. One maker OP and even shaman. I mean, that's one play. Wait, well, what's the good one cost spell? Like, evolve? That's like a zero, right? Many spellkin is just like a one. Then Demon Hunter. You just want. Like, there's so much better two drops. There's Umberwing. There's, like, Battle Fiend and Battle Mage. There's. Like, it just never makes it. It's just pack filler. Like, sure, like, this is what people do a lot when they're evaluating cards, is what they'll do is they'll, they'll really look really hard to find a place for this card. They'll be like, maybe you can run it in Highlander, Beast Control, Hero Power, One Cost Spell Shaman. Like, yeah, yeah, this card is never, it's never bad. You gotta think second expansion, second expansion of the year, this card has to be better than something currently in Demon Hunter. And it's not. Altruist combo? See, this is what I mean. People are like, maybe, but what if you had 14 mana, Altruist, and a full hand of zero cost cards? Then one maker would work. Like, this is true. Crimson Hothead, Spellburst. You yeah, plus one attack and taunt. Seems okay. Mmm. Nah. Nah. Mmm. I don't know. I was making sheep noises as if that was going to help me think. Um. It's a dragon, so like this is a dragon draconic lackey buff. Is this what this is? This is like draconic lackey is okay now because you can get a good four drop. I'll give it three for the draconic lackey factor. It's just a neutral that doesn't do much. It never goes in an actual deck. It never does enough to go in an actual deck or define any kind of archetype. But it does just draconic lackey buff. So like it's better than Twilight. I mean, I'm not very good at discovering Twilight, and it's good at Twilight if you have five mana and an empty hand. I go get a one for actual playability, but like it's a, just to talk about the card, it's a draconic lucky buff. That's cool, right? And yeah, if you discover after draconic lucky, you're happy. Doesn't die to shadow word um shadow words because it has four attack. Divine rager. I like this card. I think this card's really annoying. It's kind of like me, um, but it's really annoying. Like to remove, you have to hit two things into it. Like it's it's. You, again, it's a neutral. You're never playing this in decks. Five out of five. What's up, Solemn? You're never actually playing this. Like, you never like, boy, do I really want a four mana Divine Rager. <laughs> like, Magma Rager, when he just on roids. Like, he's swole. But, no, we don't, we don't, we don't play this. It's, it's not even a two. It's annoying to remove, but, like, nobody's like, hmm, what card should I cut to fit Divine Rager in this list? Uh, it's pretty good evolve though. If I evolve into this, I'm kind of happy. Fish Flyer is actually a three. Uh, hot take, it's a Murloc, so you can play it in Murloc decks. That's my hottest take of the year. Murlocs go in Murloc decks, and it probably does. Uh, I'm guessing he does, his ghost is just the exact same thing as him. Four mana, four three with Rush. Gives you a bit of longevity with a Murloc deck, like maybe Paladin. Okay, that's, that's a long shot. I kind of just did the Battlegrounds thing where I just pick everything that says Murloc and put it together. Um, this is what I'm doing. Murloc card. Maybe goes in Murloc. Imagine the Ice Hurley's Rager support. Give all of your Ragers plus 5 health. <laughs> Insane. Maybe. Yeah, but Fish Flyer is a, is a 3. It's like, it has potential in Murloc decks, but it, it, realistically, it's not not going to be like, damn, Blizzard nerfed the Fish Flyer. This game's unfair. Fish Flyer too strong. Sadly, it's it's not the New Zilli X. Wretched Tour. Spellbar still to damage to all other minions. You know what? Of all the neutral cards, this is one of the better ones. Uh, which makes it like a three and a half. Again, like it's not insane. But like the quality of neutral cards so far has been garbage. These all suck. These are all like scrolling through them all. None of them are going to see play. This one is also not going to see play. But maybe in control, like you, 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 you okay, it's, yeah, it's a one. Okay, let's move on. Um, Lake Thresher. It's the new Hydra. We just doubled Hydra stats and didn't really because I can't do maths. Um, do, do we do we know we never play this right? Like all these neutrals are just like good stats for cost. 
Oh, that's a good argument. Druid deck. Oh, you play the you play the guardian animals and the animals like oak. Okay, okay, they have rush. Okay, yeah, that's the four. I have been convinced. <laughs> that's I was like, when you never just play this on five, but when you get it for three and a half mana with rush. Okay, if this said three and a half mana and it had rush, I would I would play it. So, with that argument, it's a four. Survival the fittest. Oh my gosh, make it an eight ten. We a ten it. We play it with broom. Okay, maybe maybe a lake thresher broom deck's a bit of a bit of a bit of a stretch. <laughs> we got to the point where we're doing that thing again, where we try and like put random cards together to make lake thresher op. But maybe this card is actually better. This card gets a uh, gets an upgrade. Chat's convinced me. This card is better than it looks. Uh, ogre mancer. It's like mogar. The no no that's not called trogzor. Yeah, trogzor the one star. This is it's a five. Wait 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 wait. I looked at the 3-7 stat line and expected this to cost 6 or 7 mana. It costs 5 mana. This, is, this, is this not just really good? Yeah, is this not just really good? Like, the stats are insane. My voice is, like, cracking here. Like, the stats are... The stats don't lie. It's a 3-7 that's almost guaranteed... Like, if they don't have board, they have to remove you with a rush minion or a spell. Not many rush minions come down on turn 5 and kill a 3-7. Which means they probably have to kill it with one one or two spells. One spell and you already got 5-9. Right? You already got 5 on a 5-9. The 2-2 two -two taunt also like... Dude, I'm playing Ogre Mancer in like every deck. Okay, maybe not every deck. I, I agree with Boar here. If Boar rated this busted, I can see it. It isn't no 3 mana 110. It isn't. It actually has less stats than War Mode Challenger if you add them together. But you know what? It's a 4 star. Ogre Mancer, one of the better neutrals. I don't think I can see a deck where you actually play this. Maybe some kind of Highlander deck? It's an Ogre. You can't not rate the Ogre. You can't not love an Ogre. We're, we're giving the Ogre 4 star. Ogres are like onions. They both have layers. Can I win more? But it's also defensive. Uh, Steward of Scrolls. Scrolls. I said I just called them Scrolls. <laughs> Yo, spell number plus one back. I discover a spell. It's like Azure Drake. They, they printed Azure Drake as an elemental. I like this. Uh, is it good enough? I actually think so. I actually think this card is good. Um, why is this bad? It synergizes in spell damage decks. Like, everyone said Volpura Scoundrel was bad, right? Everyone said Volpura was bad. Um, and Volpura, like, actually popped off in quite a few classes. Um, discovering a card is worse than drawing one. This is true. Maybe we go two. But it has spell damage. Mm. Let's go two. The stats aren't good enough. If it was a four or five, maybe, maybe we consider it. Uh, I don't know. This is another uh, Draconic Lackey buff. I think it's really good with Draconic Lackey. You take it because it has stats. It has stats for days. Will it see play in any deck? I don't think so. I don't think... Maybe you... like You never... Wait. Do you ever cut Emerald? Expl no, you never cut Emerald for this in Druid. Ignore me. It's just a two. I don't think you play this in Druid over the Emerald Explorer. Just because of Emerald Explorer's ability to discover Ysera. The the reason the four rate taunt being able to discover Ysera just, just way outweighs the potential that you can get two random spells here. Even though spells help Druid, two random spells are like pretty good in Druid. The Druid's the only class I can see running this because of Breath of Dream Synergy. Um but even if you get extra spells in Druid, I feel like Yeah yeah. It's good if it's discovered. Discovering cards worse than drawing because you put cards in your deck because you want them. Um, you put cards in your deck because you want to draw them. That's the point of the cards. That's why the cards are in your deck. Discovered cards can be anything. So they can be cards that don't synergize with your deck. They can be cards that do synergize with your deck. Also insane with power creation. This is true. There are so many good druid spells, but I don't think this is better than the 4-8, so it doesn't go in. But, yeah, yeah. Well, if you discover a card in your deck, then it's like the same. I mean, it's probably better, but then. Smug Senior. Taunt, Death Rattle, out of 5-7 goes to the taunt in your hand. Also really good with power creation. Another power creation buff. Solid. More taunts. Increasing the odds of getting taunt off power creation is always nice when you're in a defensive position as the mage. Does it ever see play in a deck? No. So let's give it a 1. And let's move on. Like, like Arena, sure. Good value in Arena. Probably 5 star in Arena. But, like, no one plays Arena. So, that's good. I'm sure the 3 people will enjoy it. If you'll spell that, I'm going to copy of this. Ooh, this card's hard to evaluate. If this was a 4-4 four -four that summoned another 4-4... Four -four? 4-4, four, four, then it's good, right? If it's a 4-4 four, four, that sounds a 4-4-4-4-4, four, 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 four. I sound like I'm speaking Swedish. 
Um, no one's going to get that reference. <laughs> but I play Arena Angry Face. Um, if you have a spell on it, I want a copy of this. I guess you play the... Like, to guarantee this, at worst, you play the one mana Mage Minion. Um, what's his name? Uh, where are you? You play like this, and then you have a 7 mana 12-12, but is it too slow? Maybe it's good enough. Maybe it's good enough to go and Shaman. Oh, you have the you have the Dagger. You have the Shaman Dagger, right? You have the Shaman Dagger. Where is it? There we go. You, you can play this on 6. That seems good, right? You play this, and then, like, you play this. Okay, we'll give it three. Uh, you can't discover a spell damage with this because it doesn't it doesn't have spell damage itself. You can Lightning Bloom play this on four. Okay, you guys have sold me. Three is fair, but, yeah. If you have Lightning Bloom, you can play this, like, super early. You play this on two, you go Lightning Bloom on, like, coin on four, and then you play this on turn three. Okay, that's kind of nutty. Can't wait for the three arena players to dislike your videos. If they watch it, it's, if anyone watches my YouTube, I'll take it. Um, plagued Proto Jake. Proto Jake. Pronunciation. Um, it's a bit thick. It's pretty thick. Probably goes in like Big Warrior. But like, no one's like, oh man, my. my you know what? This is what I was thinking about. With the four mana rearrange your deck card. I was thinking that maybe you make a quest wallet that just doesn't want any burn or any Malagos. Because, like, you don't want, you don't want, like, um, you don't want, like, burn to be the bottom of your deck. So you just run really big minions. But, yeah, again, nice evolve. It continues to make 8 drops the strongest pull of evolve minions. I think they're still stronger. They're stronger than 10 drops now, I think. Good Draconic Lackey. Good Ysera Unleashed. Do I run it in my deck? No. Cult Neophyte. So... I remember when this card first got released. Someone in chat said to me, this card is insane. It destroys aggro. It, 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 so it goes in every aggro deck and beats control. I say to them, no. I say to them, it's a 2 mana 3 2, not 2 mana 4 4, not Melhouse. Uh, basically, just like. Um, you can't. What do you run this in? Like, it's an annoying minion. It's just a 2 mana 3 2. And I think your opponent, like, there's so much rush. So many rush minions in the game. What spell. Like, what AoE do you. Like, What's the best way to put this? There's not much AoE that you play around and on turn two. On turn two, there's not much AoE. Like there's nothing you do on turn. If you play this on turn two, you're not really stopping anything. Uh, if you play this on turn, if you don't play it on turn two, you kind of a lot. Of, wait, let me. Uh, I'm not picking this the right the way I want to put it. Often, if you don't have a two drop, often if you don't have a two drop, you're just gonna have to play this on turn two. If you play it on turn two, it does nothing and it's two mana three two. It's just a raptor. So often, it's best if you hold it for like turn 4, 5, 6 going to AoE turns. But if you end up holding it, you've got a dead card in your hand and you're losing tempo. You see where I'm coming from here? Like, you either have to play it on 2 as a 2 drop. and the, it's only So it's only good if you have another 2 drop in hand, basically. Otherwise, you're falling behind on tempo. Or you're waiting to late game and then you've had a dead card in your hand for ages. So like, sure, you, like, against Druid, you can sort of stop Breath of Dreams. Start, start, start sort of stop dark skies like if you play a one drop on one you play a two drop on two um you play this on two they can't dark skies on three they just tap on two and then they dark skies you on three anyway so you take like three extra damage stops breath of the infinite against priest stops coin plays on two i know it does stop these things it's just whether it's good enough that's my point like i know it does do these things it's just whether doing these things is powerful enough to warrant having a pretty bad card in your deck like, Lothab's insane because it stops anything happening. This just delays. This either delays stuff from happening. Or it, like... It slows Zeph. Zeph just takes a minion, then. Like... I'm not, there's not many minions that remove stuff off of Zeph. It does slow down Zeph, but, like... Your opponent's not Zephing on 2 anyway much. Like, it stops Edwin on 3, then they just Edwin on 4. Do you see my point here? Like, if this stops Edwin on 3, they just make a bigger Edwin on 4. If this stops Zeph on 3, they just Zeph you on 4. And you've not put up enough tempo to make the delay worth it because you've just played a 3-2.
if you played a three, if this was like, if you put loads of stuff on board, then the delay is useful. But the delay is not useful if, like, the delay isn't useful if you're not putting enough stuff on board. So I'm giving it a two. I'm sticking with a two. You guys can laugh at me if this card's nuts. Uh, I'm saying this is a two. This card is overrated, but also a four. It's not five, it's a four. Um, it doesn't go in every aggro list. It probably... Does it even go in Demon Hunter? I don't know. This is a four. Uh, four. Again, this is my, this is my, like, my, this card isn't as good as everyone says of the expansion. Uh, mainly, Demon, let's say Demon Hunter. You run it in Temple Demon Hunter. Do you cut Skull? Do you cut Glide? Like, I know Glide sucks anyway, but do you cut Skull? Do you cut all your card draw? Because if you have, like, Skull and stuff in hand, then this card's garbage. Like... So in Demon Hunter, the card with the most draw in the game, almost, for an aggro deck, I don't think you even need this. Token Druid, good. Zoolock, again, you're playing Hand of Gul'dan in Zoolock. You want a big hand for scrapping, but it's got anti-synergy with Zoo. Right? Like, it has anti-synergy with Zoo because, like, you want to be tapping, you want to be building a big hand and scrap imping. So it's bad in Zoo. It's kind of bad in Demon Hunter. Maybe cut Chaos Strike, but, like, it's kind of bad in Demon Hunter. It's kind of bad in Zoo. It's maybe token druid when you've already burned out. Maybe some kind of aggro spell damage. I mean, I've convinced myself of three. Aggro paladin. You think aggro paladin's gonna be good? I don't know if aggro paladin has the support. Maybe aggro rogue. Aggro rogue is the one argument where I can be like, maybe aggro rogue is good. And discard lock in wild probably. But you just run the one mana one three in wild. Uh, I'm gonna go with three. I think this is pretty overrated. I'm gonna. This is one where I'm prepared to be wrong. Everyone, if this goes on YouTube, and you can the comments, and you can say this card is... But this is my reasoning for it. I just don't see anything right now where it's insane. Maybe Murloc Paladin. Okay, there's a couple of decks. But then you have a card that isn't a meta. Then you don't have a card that isn't a Murloc. Uh, and I think a lot of people are overrating this because the card looks good. There's a lot of cards right now that look really good on paper and don't have the synergy yet. Two expansions time, this card is nuts. Not this expansion, the one after. If there's some hyper aggro, this card is nuts. I think it's going to be the Maya of this expansion. So it's a three. The Robot's Protection is a five. Four. Four. It goes in every Highlander deck. Um, this card goes in every Highlander deck. You basically play it and you play one copy in a Highlander deck and it's just good around it. This is, this is a much better... So we have Cult Neophyte. We have Robot's Protection. We compare these two cards. One of them plays around AoE for one turn. One of them permanently plays around AoE. One gives you limited tempo, one gives you better stats and more tempo. This is a much this is much better at doing its job than Cult Neophyte. Uh, which is why I think it's a four. Uh Roads Protection plus Cream, you just nothing dies ever. OP OP. <laughs> Literally nothing dies. But no, I think Robes goes in Highlander decks. I don't think you build decks round it. Maybe you just run a one off in some decks where you want to keep bored, like kind of Zoe aggro kind of things. Obviously you still lose to AoE. Like, you still lose to Flame Strikes and, and Hagatha Schemes and Tidal Waves. and Like, you don't play on AoE that way, but you play on single target removal. And I think if you have, like, valuable minions that you don't want to... You don't want to die. Um, It's pretty good. This in Token Dread and Wild is good. This is true. Wild is, Wild is busted anyway. The Wild is a lost cause. Yeah, it doesn't really play on AoE. I mean, like, single target removal. Did I say AoE? I meant, like, you play around kind of, like, targeted AoE. So, Rolling Fireball doesn't work. Combustion doesn't work. These kind of AoEs. Not like... Yeah, Priest, you, you just screw in Priest right here. No death targets. Like, you make a big... You make a big Questing or a big Edwin. Cannot die. I think it's pretty good. Um, Obviously, this with Kreen is a bit greedy because it's like 6 mana and you have to build a board. It's probably not going to come off that often. But, um, no, I think Robes Protection is a 4. Transfer Student. Uh, we've already had a taste of this card. We've had a little try of it. Um, What do we think? We've all tried this. It seems pretty good on certain... The Skull of Man's board... I'm going to go three. This card's been okay. It has potential. You play in Highlander decks just to fill out the carve and like Hunter. I don't think it's strong enough to break into Highlander Hunter. And it's strong enough to break into Zoo. Some some Zoo lists have run it. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's a solid aggressive card. The The effects are pretty good. The new Skull of Man's effect is add a dual class card to your hand. Uh, on average, they've been pretty strong. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think just just average bang average three just in the middle seems fine. People played it because it's new. I thought that at the start. I thought everyone was just playing because it, it was new, but people kept playing it like week like a week and a bit later. So 
I think it's like alright. It's like meh. It's not meta defining. It doesn't go in every meta deck, but it's it's fine. Educate Alec. Ha, we you guys hate exalting mind seller. Now look. Now look this way. This way. Exotic mind seller. Just got worse for you. Suck it, Druid player. I mean Druid players love this. Druid players, you love to see it. Druid players love to see it. You play spells, you get this. You get it from Mount Cellar, you get more spells, the spells get shuffled. You can literally go to Fatigue now as a Druid and just shuffle more spells. Uh, Educate Alec is the worst thing that ever happened to Mount Cellar Druid. Mount Cellar Druid is going to be disgusting next expansion. Um, I think you cut Fungal, maybe cut Fungal. I don't know if you cut Fungal, but... Mount Cellar Druid is looking to be nasty, like really nasty. Um, so Druid is going to be really strong. Uh, whether you play this in your deck on its own... There's probably some dumb combo with like Sorcerer's Apprentice and that like, you shuffle like a million frost bolts into the deck or something and then you play the the five drop and then you Sorcerer's Apprentice twice. Like you could probably play this like frost you play two of these, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, shuffle four frost bolts, and then go Mozaki, Apprentice, Apprentice, four frost bolts. Is that enough damage? That's three plus four plus five plus six. That's like eighteen damage, not quite. There's probably some OTK somewhere. But like on its own it's just like a one or a two. But with Mount Cellar, it's, it's nutty. Just because it stops you fatiguing. The card text is interesting. I'm not a fan of the card text, but... Yeah, obviously you don't want to top deck the spells, but it's really good if you kind of go on fatigue and, like... Yeah, you just get more stuff. Like, a lot of time Druids go to fatigue, so... More free stuff is good. And you can also cycle, like, like overflows and stuff. I don't know. And Nature Studies, cycling Nature Studies isn't bad. Enchanted Cauldron. Damn, he, he, got, he got that face, though. Do -do 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 -do. He got face. Um... He does have a face. Whether we whether we play this card, it's just a one. Um, random is not fun. It's packed. Fill. You could definitely play this on three. You play a four cost spell. It just screws you way too more than it's good. It's never good. Like random is random is too risky to make it consistently top tier. If it was cast a big summon a minion of the spell co same cost or something, it might be strong. Because you go like three drop, four cost spell, then you have a four drop, but like random to random. Sphere is interesting. Sphere is really interesting. I think I really like that they've added this to the game. I just don't know if it's good enough. But I like that it's in the game. That's the best that's the best way I can put it. I like that it exists. How good is this? So I still look at top card, you put it on the bottom and lose one durability. So it doesn't start in your hand. That's one thing. So you have to draw it first. You then... It's a, no no instant tempo. You don't do anything first. You don't do anything the moment it's played. So let's let's just talk through the card first before I rate it. Because I'm not sure. You draw it. And you play it and it does nothing. It only costs one. So doing nothing is, is irrelevant. Um, you can buff it with green skin if you're feeling edgy. But that's that's irrelevant. Um, in Quest Orlock, it seems very, very good. Like, what decks are we looking to run this in right now? I don't think it goes in aggro. It doesn't go in aggro, for sure. Um, two, two mana, three, two, and two mana, just seems some, some plant has a similar effect. It had a better effect. Putting something on the bottom and putting something on the top is different. Um, you know you're going to draw for zero? True. And you can, like, Quest Orlock seems really good, because, like, if you see something expensive, you just don't scry it, and then you just tap. If you see something cheap, you can scry it, and then tap. Yeah, I think it's... It, yeah, any control deck wins this. It's a four. It gets random meta decks. It goes in control. It goes in combo. So let's take control and combo and give it a four. Uh, th this is just how you evaluate cards, and I think we we evaluate this one well. Lower keeper pull kite kelt. Ah, uh, this card is so hard to evaluate. It's really like it's hard. It's either a one or a five exactly. Like, it's a super unique card, and I think your timing with it has to be spot on. You never play on four. You literally never play on four. It seems meme. It's good if you play it right. Yeah, I think it's really, like, Holy Wrath in standard, the most you can get is ten right now, I think. Maybe eight? I don't actually know. I'm not giving it a one. I just clicked that. Um, Quest Lot, you always draw Malagos. True, but then your burst's always on the bottom. Also, if your opponent shuffles bombs, it reorders the deck again. So if this deck, if this card does get good, Bomb Warrior just gets good. You gotta remember that. You play on four, on five, and you get Skull on six and Temple Demon Hunter. True, but then you have to run a four mana four five in Temple Demon Hunter. See the issue here? Like, surely you just run double jump then if you want to guarantee Skull on like six. You just are on seven. Um, 
A season turn five on Demon Hunter? I guess maybe it goes on Demon Hunter. It's a four mana four five. Like it's weak. Uh, that's just weak as, to, as far as Demon Hunter standards go, it's weak. Um, Demon Hunters also now have the, the 5 mana 5-5 five five as their like turn 5 plays Demon Hunter. Gala Rogue is an interesting one. If you, you play this and then you Galakron, it's good. The only issue with this is, you ha again, you have to do it in two... Um, you have to do it over like two turns. So it's like a two turn setup. So you can like play this, top deck Galakron, and then Galakron and get Kronks. So like that's not bad. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with three or four. I'm gonna go with four, but if it gets good, bomb warrior just gets good. Um, yeah. Headmaster Kelthuzad. So I originally thought this was bad. I saw this and I was like, bad. This card is just, yeah, it's so bad. You need to win the brawl. Then I remembered priest exists. This with shadow word death is insane. This with shadow word ruin is insane. This with 90% of priest removal, even time rip, is insane. So, with that being said, it becomes a 4, just in priest. Because it's played in meta decks. It's played in priest. There's no other class I can think of right now that wants it, right? You just play priest. Which is great. More priest support. We all love priest. We love priest. We all love priest. Um, the what else do you run this in? Mage, maybe with rolling fireball. Does that work? Probably works. Oh, you can rolling fireball kill multiple minions. That's pretty good, but that's like your full turn. That's turn 10. Maybe Kelth is at Frost Nova and then like Blizzard or Flame Strike, and that's probably too much setup. I don't think any other classes have the. Maybe Combustion's good enough. True. It's still a turn 8 combo. I don't think any other class has the longevity to, to be able to live long enough to combo this with a spell. I feel like most classes that try and play this will end up just playing it on 5 and hoping it sticks. In which case, it's just a Spiteful Smith. Like, it's just a 5 on a 4-6. So I'm going to go with 3, just because, like, now that I say it out loud, Priest seems like the only playable one, and even then it's fringe. I don't think Priest even plays this. They should have just made it, like, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three or something. Then maybe, maybe a 4 mana 4-4? Four, four? I don't know. I think it's too expensive. Shield Slam? Maybe in Warrior. Maybe in Warrior you play Shield Slam. Control Demon Hunter doesn't really have removal spells, right? Except like Blade Dance. Oh, Blade Dance. You play like Warglaves on six and then like Kel'Thuzad Blade Dance. That seems really greedy. Oh, no, no, no. Frost Nova and then you play Kel'Thuzad. Sorry, I should have said that. You Frost Nova and then you play Kel'Thuzad. I should have I clarified. Vectus. This is a two. Uh, I don't think any death rattles are strong enough right now to warrant because you have to play big death rattles first. So Vectus on five never happens. If you could Vectus on five, it's it's pretty nutty. Chaos Nova KT, that's a turn ten combo. I don't I'm not a big fan of turn ten combos because you have to hold both cards for ages. If you're against aggro, you want to throw that Chaos Nova on five anyway. So turn ten combos are just usually too expensive to, to do stuff. Uh primes. You can shuffle primes. This is true. You should shuffle like Solarian Prime. That seems like... But then in Highlander Mage, you shuffle two Solarian Primes and then you can Zeph. I don't know. I feel like you have to play big minions first for Vectus. Guild set into two. I give it a three just because it's priest priest potential. But two or three. I think I can, I'm leaning towards it's just bad. Um, Seven out of the Blade Dance on eight for sure. Cut Zeph for Vectus in Highlander Mage. You guys are right. Yeah, Vectus is an insta... Uh, it's a one. Vectus is a one. He doesn't... Um, Jambre tweeted at the dev at one of the... At Celestalon. And he said, um, if you give a minion like Librams with a death rattle, does Vectus copy? And Vectus does not. Vectus only copies minions. So he doesn't copy any spell death rattles, just minions. So he's actually just useless. Uh, Keymaster Alabaster. You're useless. Get a plaster. Um, he's useless. It's a 7 mana 6 8. Add random card from your opponent's deck to your hand. It costs 1. Uh, there's no way to make your opponent draw cards. You get 1 free card and then it dies. Uh, 7 mana gain 1 free card and just, just, yeah, it's just dust. He needs to be cheaper. You need to have a way to make your opponent draw cards. You need to have a way to gain instant tempo. You need to have a way to play that card the same turn. Otherwise, you're just going to fall behind. Again, really nutty if you glide. I don't know. Last time I checked, 7 plus 4 was at 11. 
So it doesn't really work with Glide. Cut seven plus four is more than ah, oh, just coin it, forehead. Uh, yeah, hold the coin the whole game, and then maybe Keymaster Alabaster with exactly Glide in the exact outcast position, maybe keeps you in the game. Hand of Gul'dan. Like, your opponent has to draw. Yeah, skull into it. Sure, any card is good when you skull into it. That's not an argument to say the card is good, right? Like, yeah, if you skull into into any card, it's free. It's cheap. Then it's OP. This card is free. <laughs> like, that's the same argument as this card is good if it costs four mana. Like, yes, obviously. Anyway. That is neutral's done. Holy crap. Uh, if you've made it to the end of the video, this is the outro that's going to be on every single card review that I do. I guess for forever. <laughs> Just reuse this on every video. Uh, if you're new, please drop a like, subscribe. Check out my stream at twitch.tv slash liquidox with a couple of underscores or some, some whatever. Oh, this is great. Um, and yeah, turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I go live. Will it be next week? When I go live? When I post a video? Will it be next week? Will it be next month? Will it be tomorrow? Who knows? You'll know if you have the bell on. So yeah, have a good day. Stay hydrated. Go outside a bit. Peace.